What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space, and we are back once again with some more Planets Comp goodness. And as you can see from the intro, hopefully, we're dealing with another pretty crazy, not design this time, but I have to admit that is Keen's deterrent fighter, but modified to work alongside a pretty damn cool script, and hopefully I can do my best to show it off for you today. So this one's coming to us from 1WSX10, however, I don't think you're supposed to pronounce it, I think that's actually what it is, and let's dive in, try and show you firsthand not how it works, because I have no clue, but at least I can show you how it functions, what functionality you get out of it, and also how easy it'll be to apply to your own designs. So here is Keen's Deterrent Fighter, you guys will recognise that side of things. What you probably won't recognise is why it's now got six rotors hanging off of it, and on each rotor you'll notice we've got an engine. What we don't have on this craft, however, is any other engines, and that's where the coolness starts. So rather than talk too much, let's get in and start about the flight procedure. Jump in the cockpit, you'll notice we have a screen over there telling us the state of our thrusters and our dampers, but also a target acceleration, which we'll get back to in a bit. All I'm going to do for now is hit X, going to turn our thrusters on, and that's going to start picking us up. That changes to true. We start lifting off the ground. Nice, nice and smooth, no issues here. And then once we get to a desired height, I'm just going to hit Z to turn the dampers on, and you'll see something kind of interesting happen already. So, full rotation from the thrusters to stop us and hold us at this height now, and you'll notice that that back uh, thruster isn't pointing in line with the ship at the moment. That's actually because we're slightly twisted over as far as gravity is concerned. So yeah, what this is all about is vectoring thrust, which basically means ensuring that your thrust is constantly countering gravity while also supporting the direction you wish to go in. So as you can see, if I hold forwards, it kind of leans the thrusters back a bit to give us forward momentum bulk while keeping us in the air. And if I do something really silly like point at the ground, it's just going to spin those thrusters to keep us stable. Now I'm not sure I ever imagined this day was going to come, but it does look like the day of the VTOL has arrived as space engineers, because the other thing I'm doing here is controlling this purely through WAS and D. So you guys won't be able to see this, but on the bars, there is basically nothing. Those eight and nine at the end is just to start the timer that runs it all. Other than that, we're using Digi's control module, which is, well, it's not vanilla, so this can't be included in the vanilla category, but I feel like it almost should be at this point, to bind WAS and D, Q and E and so on, so that we can use them with these thrusters, and a really, really clever script that, honestly, I can't tell you how it works. I have no idea. I'm just, sorry, I don't know maths that well, but what I can do is kind of show you what's going on so you understand what I mean. So all of this is the readout from that script, and I recognise some of what's being said here. Thrust desired vector result. I just have no idea what maths is involved to actually produce these results. And there is a lot going on. Every single one of these rotors is constantly calculating which direction the thrust should be applied in. Super duper clever, and actually has one extra feature, which is that target acceleration I mentioned earlier. So at the moment we're set to 1G, and if I hold forwards you'll notice the thrusters kind of point down and backwards at the same time, but they're not using all of their thrust at the moment. And that's because that literally is target acceleration. It's nothing to do with gravity. This thing will hold itself level using dampers regardless. But if we press plus now to hold, turn that acceleration up, it's on plus and minus on the keyboard. Again, another advantage of Digi's control module, really cool. And hold W this time, you'll see that our thrusters are much more level and they're on full power. Now in this case, we're actually going to drop slightly. So rather than counter that, I can just press minus a couple of times. You'll notice the thrusters start to tilt downwards a bit further. And now they'll still do their adjustment thing. So as I drive around, they'll still do that. But now we're holding this speed and going nice and stable upright, but with more acceleration, more thrust coming out the back. And the same way, if we now brake, it'll use more thrust for the braking as well. All really cool. The one thing that I have to admit I'm doing here that's... I'm actually overlooking a little bit of what he's done with the script that's super duper clever, and I'll show you some footage on top of this if I can. But at the moment, I'm actually running a speed mod that's limiting the speed on the server to 60. And that's because, you guys will know, rotor safety locks are a pain. As soon as this craft hit 90 meters a second in vanilla, it would lock all of these rotors and it would just stop functioning. So what he ended up having to do was actually include something in the script to counter that, where it actively goes and stops itself once it starts getting too quick. Unfortunately, the byproduct of the stopping itself once it gets too quick is those engines are constantly flipping around like this. 
and so I decided for the recording purposes it would look quite a lot better if it was just flying smoothly. However, it does support going much faster than this, like much higher speed mods, as long as you take into account that that rotor safety lock is always going to be a bit of a pain. So the final thing I should do, I guess, is let's bring her down for a landing. Now one of the things you've got to be aware of, if you turn the acceleration up, you do want to turn it down for a landing, otherwise you're going to be landing quite sharply, quite a lot more sharply than you expect, but relatively simple to land. The only thing I'd say be aware of is it is a little bit floaty when it gets near the ground. It wants to keep trying to take off and keep going up into the air, so you can see there it's kind of it's almost recognised that it's getting close to the ground and putting itself into a good take up as take off position. But as long as you counter it nicely, she's being nice and slow. Get down low enough, eight meters, seven, six, five. You can just drop the engines off basically. And there we go, down for a smooth landing. And I can tell you quickly how to set this thing up for your own designs because I really approve of the fact that he included these options. This isn't just a one-off for this creation. This is a script you guys can use. So you'll notice we have a bunch of groups. They've all got percentage nacelle in them. They represent each one of the nacelles on there and each one's got a rotor in it and the thrusters on that rotor. That's all that matters. Now you will notice that we've got some numbers included here. And what that does is basically tell the mod that some of these rotors have been rotated 90 degrees from their default position just so it knows what's going on so you set your groups up with your thrusters and your rotors in be aware it is space engineers it is VTOLs in space engineers there's a reason he's got these four thrusters nice and balanced like they are they do need to be like that otherwise the ship will behave weirdly now if I was to jump out the front one potential use for this because it's got this amazing ability like even on the ground here you can see the thrusters are I didn't realize we landed on something that steep that would explain why we were coming down a bit weird you don't even notice with this craft, but you can see that like, it can hold itself upright at any angle. Now that's really handy for mining, you'd think. So we'd just go in here and we'd grab out a drill and whack it on the front somewhere, replace these rocket launchers perhaps. Problem with that is, as soon as you do something like that, so as soon as you attach something that's heavy on the front, it's going to behave differently because that's changed the sensor of gravity. It's moved it all around and now this thing, when we get in, is going to lean slowly forwards. You can already see it starting to do so. It's just going to keep doing that a little bit, unfortunately. Very hard to keep it stable now because it's also leaning slowly to one side as well. Like the center of mass actually kind of means something a lot more than it normally does in Space Engineers as soon as you've got rotors involved and no rotor safety locks. But it does mean now that like VTOLs are a thing. I might not be able to use it for, for mining due to issues with keeping it properly balanced. It would be quite difficult to do that. But I do want to try and make some fighters and some different craft using this technique. Aside from keeping it balanced, the only other thing you're going to need is to install the control module. There's a couple of settings to add in here, which is to do with repeat interval and so on. Reads all inputs, that's it. And you run the programming. You run the programming block and uh, the program and you have this text pattern, not the text panel, the timer block with your usual start procedure. So default argument, start, trigger now. Everyone's familiar with that. And then it will take over the rest of it. And you've got yourself a fully functional deterrent fighter, pretty damn cool, that can do silly things like just spin on the spot in the air and make everyone feel really sick. Sorry, shouldn't be doing that. I know better. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. I certainly, I'm intrigued by the potential of what I can now mess around and do with this script. And I'm kind of really enjoying just just how well it functions. I mean, you guys will, you guys who have tried VTOLs know that this is doing really quite nice. Just being able to hover itself like this automatically, that's a really unusual, really crazy thing. So fair play, Mr. 1WSX10. Unfortunately, difficult name to pronounce, but I do do very much like this design. Remember to go and give it a check out in the workshop, guys. He has uploaded this as an example at the same time, but obviously the main deal is the script, using it on your own designs. And if you like this video, hopefully you did, please hit that like button. If you didn't, then obviously you know where that dislike button is. Please feel free to hit that as well. And if you're coming here for the first time, first time on the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got some pretty cool Space Engineers content coming up quite often now with all these planets competition entries. And if nothing else, that should be pretty damn cool to watch. So thanks a lot for watching, folks. I will catch you for the next one. Woo!